Hi, 2023 seems to be the year for ZK rollups, and in this video we are talking about another one, that is Type 1 ZK EVM Psycho. With ZK rollups you can verify the integrity of transactions without revealing specific details of those transactions, and they are also mainly used for scalability. So if you are at all familiar with Ethereum, you know that it is hardly scalable uh, because of its slow transactions per second that it can process. So with rollups, you aim to increase the efficiency of Ethereum and make it process like thousands of transactions so that the world can adopt it basically. ZK rollups are short for zero knowledge rollups. So what they do, they kind of roll up the transactions into one single proof. So instead of verifying a bunch of transactions, the main chain Ethereum only has to verify one single proof that this rollup generates. This makes it more efficient. You probably already know about many layer 2 solutions that aim to solve the scalability issue of Ethereum. However, there are not that many that are type 1 zero-knowledge rollups. What makes them different from other types is that they are the most compatible with every DApp that is built in Ethereum. And they are also called Ethereum equivalent. So type 1 ZK EVMs are... Basically, you can build any kind of EVM-compatible application on this type of rollups. However, other types, let's say type 2 rollups or type 3 or type 4, are not particularly composable with the dApps that are built on Ethereum. They might be dApp-specific, um, although they are faster than type 1 rollups. So the main drawback, as you can guess, is that because it is so compatible and it preserves the most structure of Ethereum, type 1 rollups are the slowest types of rollups that you can get. However, Tyco, that is what Tyco aims to solve with its protocol design, so they are focusing on increasing the speed of type 1 rollups. Apart from um, the speed of uh, type 1 rollups, there are some general critiques of rollups overall, and they mostly concern off-chain operation. So rollups generate this kind of proofs of the integrity of transactions off-chain, and therefore you are relying solely on the rollup operator to be always online and to process them accurately. Additionally, this may introduce some centralization points, because if they're, like, let's say, too expensive to generate such proofs, you may have a very few people who are generating this kind of proofs, which is not ideal if you want to have it fully decentralized. So you have to make sure that both the provers that are generating zero-knowledge proofs are decentralized and people who are generating and verifying these proofs, so the validators of Ethereum in this case, are also decentralized. Last month, in December, Vitalik Buterin, one of the main developers of Ethereum, tweeted about DKVMs, and he mentioned Tyco, among other rollups such as Matter Labs, that are developing their own Polygon and Starkware. Those are quite big projects and Tyco was among them, which is quite a good thing and quite a bullish like sign for Tyco. However, the success of Tyco will of course depend on how well the developers can address the speed of Type 1 rollups. He also has an article about different types of ZK EVMs. He feels like it is the best thing that Ethereum could have because composability and how everything can be built on Ethereum basically is the main selling point of Ethereum. And when other rollups are not using this great feature of composability, they are kind of losing out and missing out. At the same time, because type 1 rollups are so architecturally close to Ethereum, they are not addressing the insufficiencies Ethereum has. A few words about the team. Most of them seem to have a lot of experience in building scalability solutions and even zero-knowledge rollups already. And the founders are the previous Loopring founder, Dongwon, and the previous chief architect, Brecht Devo. I hope I pronounced them correctly. I haven't found any information about investors or tokenomics of Tyco, However, I assume it is just too early because it was just founded in the first quarter of 2022. Nevertheless, we are already approaching testnet, it actually was already launched. I was hoping to release this video before January the 31st, so that was the period when you could uh, get an NFT for your participation in the testnet. However, they decided to end that incentive earlier, namely on January the 5th. So sorry about that, I didn't manage to film the video that quickly. You can still participate in the testnet and this is just the first one. I'll show you a demo so that you can 
participate in it along with me. Hello from behind the screen, and right now I'm in the Tyco docs for the testnet. As I said already, you can no longer get an NFT for your participation, however, let's still participate and help the project out. We can add the networks to our MetaMask and that's the first thing that we do. I have already done that and as you can see I have Tyco A1 and Ethereum A1. Then the next thing we request tokens from the faucet, you can do on both or you can just request them on one faucet and get the tokens on a second network by using the bridge. This is a tweet based faucet so you just click on the create a tweet and you insert your wallet address. You also then copy the link to the tweet that you created and insert that link in the faucet. And after a little bit, you receive the token on your MetaMask wallet. There is also a bridge-based faucet. There you get your horse token. You will have to have some Ethereum on your balance to pay the gas fees for that. There is another faucet that's a manual one in Taiko Discord. You go to the manual faucet page, that's a channel, you insert your wallet address there and just send it, and it renews every 6 hours. Apart from setting up a node, there are three things you can do in this testnet as a user, that is using the bridge, interacting with contracts, even deploying them, and also transferring between accounts the tokens that you get. Let's start with the third one. You will go to your MetaMask and click to send. Then you'll need another wallet address, that can be your own wallet or the wallet of your friend or your mom. And that's it, that's very easy, you can check the transaction in Block Explorer and as you can see it was successful. Then in the same bridge where you got the horse token, you can bridge tokens from Tyco A1 to Ethereum A1. This will usually take a bit longer to transfer from Tyco to ETH than from ETH to Tyco. However, after you transfer it, you might need to switch the networks and you click to claim. Then after claiming, you click confirm in MetaMask and it's all very simple and I think quite self-explanatory. Now let's get to how to set up a node for Tyco testnet. I'm using the server with minimum requirements and they are listed on the screen right now. There are three common server providers that are popular, DigitalOcean, Contabo and Hetzner. I'm using a server from Hetzner with the operating system Ubuntu 20.04. The first thing you do is copy the wallet address of your wallet and copy it into some notes, you will later need that. Then you also copy private key of your account. So you click on three dots and export private key. And you basically copy it to the same node that you created for your wallet address. Then you will need for Windows, a mobile X term, that is the app, or for macOS, you will need the native app called Terminal. Then in the Terminal, you insert the SSH root and the IP address of your server that you were given. Then you say yes, whenever it asks you yes or no. And then it will ask you for the password and you just insert the password that you got when you got the server. And you insert the right password, not like I did. And um, then you will have to insert the password again for the current password field and come up with a new password that should not be too simple. Then you'll need the docker on your server. I will leave the link to the docker set up for Ubuntu operating system, however, the setup might be slightly different for other operating systems. So now I'm just copying the lines of code that are on docker website and listing them into my terminal. Sometimes there are two lines, so whenever there are two lines, you will have to click enter twice. You just continue either saying why or copying and pasting the code lines and feeling like a hacker or someone. I do that with every line and don't miss any, otherwise it will not work. As you can see here, whenever it asks you why slash n, you have to just press y and enter. sudo command is the last command to run your docker. And now you can finally start setting up the node itself. This guide is on GitHub, I will leave the link to that as well. And I'm doing the exact same thing, I'm just copying and pasting the lines of code. Then we are configuring our node with the command cp.env.sample.env and I will use the nano editor. For that I type nano space dot env. It will open this window. Afterwards in the enable proposer you change false to true. In the proposer private key, you insert the private key of your wallet that you copied previously into the node 
and the suggested fee recipient is the wallet address. Afterwards, you press Ctrl S and Ctrl X to save and exit the nano editor. That is cat.env command to check whether the inserted values are correct, but that's not necessary if you are sure. And the final command is a docker compose up to run the node. That's it! Congratulations, you're running your node. And uh, you can see I have already some valid blocks proven. In GitHub, there is a link to check. Instead of the local host, in that link, you insert IP address of the server that you have. And uh, there you see the backlog of all the node activity. Here is how it looks like after a while, a couple of hours, maybe a bit more. And then only if you have some suggestions or you found some bugs, you create a discussion on GitHub that's not mandatory to receive any rewards, so please don't spam there. That's all I have about Taiko for this video. If you found it useful or learned something, please leave a like. I really appreciate it and your support. It's very heartwarming. And uh, see you in the next one.